Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is our webinar on Meet Qt 5.10. I am your host, Patrick Axlin, with me, Santu Ahonen. So, to get the admin out of the way, if you have any questions during the session, they are welcome. And uh, please submit them via the question box at the bottom of the interface. Uh, we will answer those questions at the end. And also, this webinar will be recorded. Uh, you will see receive a copy of it along with the slides delivered directly to your email account. So, with that out of the way, I hope you enjoy the show, and I will hand it over to our expert, Santu. Yeah, hello. Good morning. Good evening, everybody. I'm Santu Ahonen. I'm a product manager here in the Qt company, and I'm product managing Qt for device creation which is one of our commercial products. But today I'll be talking about the Qt release uh, 5.10, and especially the new features compared to the 5.9 uh, long-term uh, support release. So I've organized the slides in a, in a deck to, to go through the, the key new features on the 5.10 uh, framework itself, uh, then talk about the, the tooling side of stuff, uh, what's new in there, compared to the previous release, then uh, covering some of the additional uh, content that we have on the commercial side, uh, what's happening there with this release, and then finally uh, talking about both 5.9 and 5.10 comparing to the previous releases and support. So, And if you have questions, uh, uh, throw them at the questions box in your uh, webinar tool. Uh, we'll be addressing those at the end of the session, uh, unless I'm smart enough and I can pick them up uh, along the way. But uh, we'll try to cover them at the end, if, if nothing else. So first of all, uh, we released the 5 to 10 before Christmas. We are only now having the uh, this session because of the, the holiday season, uh, New Year's and, and Christmas being in between. So we thought it's, it's more handy to have this session in January here. Um, the 5.10 is, is a quality improvement release. It's a batch release uh, for us. Uh, we are already working on 5.10.1, but um, the 5.10.0 is out. Uh, in that release, compared to the previous ones, we fixed uh, roughly about 300 bucks, and uh, there is about 130 tasks, be those being new features implemented in this release altogether. So, so you could say that uh, about two thirds uh, of the release, uh, or three quarters, depending how you count and how precise you want to be with that, but is is about really about the quality improvements and and making it better and shinier and uh, than the previous releases. And of course, when you do new releases, there is a uh, some regression. So some of the bugs are uh, obviously just fixing things that we broke, but that's part of the housekeeping and doing a new release. Um, the most notably uh, new features are in the graphical user interfaces. Uh, we have now the Vulkan enablers in place. We've updated the OpenGL ES APIs. There's a fair amount of improvements in the Qt Quick and, uh, and uh, connectivity. And I'll go, go into these details in the upcoming slides. So the graphics enhancements, um, the Vulkan enablers is uh, is one of the weighted APIs. So that allows you to have multiple different screens, uh, hypervisors, virtual machines, uh, and manage those through in, in, in one uh, Qt app. Uh, we can do uh, cross-platform uh, rendering on, on Vulkan. Uh, so when we have this Vulkan interface, you can build the application for Windows, Linux, uh, and Androids. Uh, we have a new queue Vulkan type uh that is available for the developers and that allows to embed it into the widget based apps also so it's not only for uh, qml apps and uh vulkan is, is extremely useful to add the 3d content into uh to the uh, application then uh, at the same time in the graphics side we've done update on the opengl uh, api so we now support opengl es 3.2 uh, so this is really enabling the development of the applications for devices with OpenGL ES 3.2. That's quite obvious. Um, we it means that development can happen on a desktop platform on on both OpenGL 3 and 4 uh, generations. 
and uh, deploying your application to uh, a platform that is supporting OpenGL ES3 uh, requires no change changes uh, in your applications other than compiling it at the, for that target. So the Qt framework will take care of uh, all the dirty laundry for you on that area. And somebody is saying that there is no audio on the on the call. Patrick, can you look at that? Uh, yes, I think he had just had a specific uh, problem with Linux and Firefox. The good news about that, we're getting a new webinar tool in the hopefully very okay. near future. Wonderful. So it shouldn't matter. Yeah, sorry about that, mate, uh, for whoever can't hear it, but it doesn't make sense of apologizing for that, for somebody who doesn't hear. I'll move on, back to the business. So <laughs> enhancements on the on the cute quick side. Uh, on the we've totally redone the gesture framework. Um, so earlier we had uh, uh, limitations in the gesture framework. So this has been totally reworked, uh, been uh, quite a bit bit of a work. And it's a technology preview in 5.13 release. So it's not a final part of the the uh, content. So it's not one that all of the gesture framework. It's a technology preview. Uh, what it really allows is that uh, you can, for example, grab the notch object on the screen and then drag it. And, and while at do, doing it, you can uh, have other touch events in your application. Um, you can handle that touch events uh, on multiple different screens. Um, uh, so it really supports nicely the Vulkan um, uh, that we have. You can also have multiple different cameras uh, to recognize different camera gestures, and we can support these different camera inputs at the same time. Uh, and it has a, quite a number of other smaller details like the single tap handles, track handlers, uh, multi-point events, uh, so in more than more than two, uh, and, and pinch handlers automatically. So this is a big improvement for those who are fiddling with the touch interfaces and especially implementing solutions with, that have more than one screen, possible multiple cameras. Another big uh, improvement uh, on the Qt Quick and QML is in the image-based style. This is a big improvement for the developer designer workflow and how those two uh, people can work together. So now the designer can use their favorite tool, uh, be that a Photoshop or Ill Illustrator or Sketch or some other tool, uh, and create the style on that tool, save that file to a shared location, and then a developer can embed that file into the uh, into the his project. And whenever each of the parties is making any changes, the uh, the style gets updated on both ends. So if, if the designer is updating the style, uh, it automatically gets updated uh, in the project and in the application and vice versa if the developer is editing it uh, for whatever reason, uh, then the, the designer will seal that change. So this is a very easy way to work together with the designer and the developer either in their own uh, uh, joint project. And this is an area especially that we will be improving over time and we are focusing on, on making even better in the upcoming releases. But this is a first major step on this, this area. Then looking into the uh, other stuff on the Qt Quick and QML, um, we have a new shape types. Um, and, and by the way, you may notice that many of these uh, have at the top of the slide, there is a link to the blog post. So if you get excited about that particular item, you can find the details uh, and more details in the blog post and you can find the developer who's been working on it and so on. So you can go directly to the source also asking things uh, in the blog post chat session. But uh, we've added these new shape types which is a much more efficient way of rendering uh, shapes on Qt Quick. So you can have uh, different kinds of uh, free forms of cu curves uh, and, and uh, fills for the curves and gradients for the different ele elements, um, elliptic arcs and so on, that uh, is really handy for uh, those who are doing their own style in their applications. And then of course, for game developers. And I can probably, 
some developer comes up with a use case and an idea how to use it is that that we couldn't even imagine but um, it makes building the uis uh, more efficient because these are created uh, programmatically and um, uh, render it uh, are 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 then uploaded into the video memory so the performance uh, the speed the frames per second and the memory usage performance is much better than what what used to be there earlier and it also makes it much easier on on how you create them in the QML application. Then uh, there are yet more improvements in the QML uh, area, and this is the the sort of the last big thing on the on the QML side. So um, we have historically really two Qt Quick controls uh, for that you need to choose from when you do your application. And originally the Qt Quit Controls 1 was created for the native desktop look and feel uh, needs. And it's still used for that. And then the Qt Quit Controls 2 was created to cater the mobile and embedded applications and their needs. And, and with this change, we are bringing those two together uh, much closer to each other. So there's uh, uh, this the desktop uh, uh, fusion style available for the Qt Quit Controls two uh, developers um, and and then you can make uh, applications that have this native look and feel uh, in a very low effort uh, with also with that framework then going into the another ui technology on the qhs ui it's uh all this interface are available today. It's uh, very important still by the, for the developers. It's actively used, uh, and we are actively maintaining and developing it. Um, the, we, there is a large number of quality upgrades that has gone into the 5.10, and we've also done quite a lot of usability and functional improvements uh, in this area. So uh, earlier there was a uh, issue with trying to mix uh, QML and QWidget UI uh, on Android. Uh, we have now fixed that issue. Uh, on Windows, there was this annoying, what is this button that was bothering you when you were trying to do a native look and feel um, widget UI? Uh, you can actually now prevent that being harassing your application. Um, we've improved the, the line uh, editor uh, selection handling. We've improved, improved this, this stepping into uh, dialogues um, using uh, double precision for floating numbers and quite a lot of more. And when I'm saying there is a lot of more, um, there is a, a site and I'll come to that to la later on the, on the presentation where you can find the whole change log uh, and details in these changes. Then on the web engine side, uh, we have a very powerful web engine on the Qt. Uh, it's based on Chromium. We also do support the WebKit web engine for application development. Um, there are some updates in the 5.10. So the, now the latest version of the, the Chromium is 61 in uh, Qt 5.10. Um, the new features there are that you can pause or resume or download items. Uh, you can, on the JavaScript, you can uh, control and activate windows uh, on, on your application. So earlier that uh, required quite a lot of work. So that is now much easier and you can do it directly on the JavaScript. Um, you can also hide the scroll bars if the aspect ratio or the resolution is not exactly what you expected or for whatever reason the content is taking more space what you expected. So you can now hide the, the scroll bars. Uh, we have more web actions that used to be in the, uh, the QWeb page are now part of the QWeb engine page. And uh, we've added a new method for starting downloads programmatically. So you don't need to have a user action to do you really want to start the download and are you sure you want to start the download and do you surely want to start the download. So those prompts are gone if you don't want those. Uh, 
Then uh, on the virtual keyboard, uh, virtual keyboard is really important uh, for developers who are working on the operating systems and environments that don't have a native virtual keyboard. Uh, I have also seen this being used on also on, on environments where there is a native keyboard, but it's not supporting the use case or the needs uh, uh, for the application developer. So it's also been used in those cases. So the virtual keyboard, what we have is a very extendable, uh, very customizable. And now it comes with the new keyboard layouts for uh, a number of new languages. So there's now also Hebrew, Serbian, Hungarian, Czech, Croat, Bulgarian, Greek, Estonian, Dutch. Uh, we've improved the, or there's a handwriting support also for Farsi, Arabic, and Chinese, Japanese, Korean. Um, we've added um, new components for input mode switch. So how do you switch between uh, different input modes? And then we fixed one uh, uh, and optimized one area on the Japanese keyboard uh, to, to match the open source Android project in this space. Then on the Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth low energy, uh, really key uh, radio technology for uh, uh, nearby nearby uh, devices. Um, the new thing in the 5.10 is that it now also is working on Windows. Uh, it wasn't working on Windows desktop. Uh, we had some native integration issues with the operating system, but those are now covered and fixed and it's working in the 5.10. We already have that on other operating system and other environments. So this is a new thing for the Windows users, if there are any out there. Um, there are a lot of enhancements in the in the Qt core. So this is the, the link that I advertised. Uh, you can actually, there are uh, enhancement and improvements in pretty much all areas of Qt. So when I did the list and, and went through the, all the changes, it turned out to be that it's it's uh, probably easier to find, uh, or much shorter list would be to find the list of items that have not been touched. So the full full list of, of changes in this in the wiki and, uh, and the address is here on the slide. So you'll get on that on the material. Uh, when Patrick puts it out. We also have a, a few uh, new models. So there's a QNet for authentication model uh, that allows uh, user authentication on, on web using OAuth 1 or o authentication 2. Um, there is a Qt speech module, which is really handy for accessibility when trying to turn the text to speech, or or if you have uh, situations like no hand situations, uh, possibly in the, for example, in a car or, or on a motorcycle, turning things uh, in the UI into speech, there is a module for that now. Um, there are also technology previews, uh, new items. Uh, I already covered the QQ pointer handlers, which was the gesture framework done right. Um, there is uh, also a Qt remote object uh, on TP2 for, for sharing Qt object APIs between processes and devices. So this is part of the, uh, uh, also links to the, what I was saying earlier into being able to support multiple screens and multiple different um, virtual machines uh, and, and processes uh, in one application. Uh, then we also have a WebGL streaming, which is really cool technology for headless devices, and that's on the next slides. So this is a technology preview. It's not yet uh, uh, final, so we expect that we will finalize it in 5.11. Uh, now is the right time to play with it, uh, find any gaps or issues or bugs. Uh, tell about those to us, and we'll fix them for the final release. But it's a technology you can use for uh, remotely manage an application on a standard browser. So the standard browser can be uh, pretty almost any modern smartphone or tablet or uh, other device has a standard browser and they support WebGL streaming. So your application can open a socket for that need. 
and it uh, allows to share the screen from the application in the browser. And then it has a user input channel for uh, getting back the user interaction with the application. This is a great use case, for example, uh, and I hate to repeat the car industry on this one, but for example, on a car, in the entertainment system, uh, there could be a mechanism to, to provide a UI or some entertainment or content for children on the back seat using their standard uh, smartphone. It's also another typical use case is that somebody is doing an Internet of Things uh, devices that don't have a screen at all. Uh, uh, but whenever nearby comes uh, a device which has a, a browser, that IoT device can be then contacted and, and connected and uh, managed through WebGL streaming. It's actually not a totally new way of, of doing stuff on Qt. We already had the VNC server on 5.9 release. So the previous release we released on, if I remember right, that was in May. Or, or early June, I can't remember the exact date. Um, but uh, it's a similar technology, allowing similar use case, uh, but it's, uh, of course, different protocol and different technology. So there are minor differences on what you can do with each. And I'd advise you to go into the documentation and, 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 and read them thoroughly to understand which one do you want to pick. So that ends the section of the, the basic framework, key new highlights. I'm moving into the tooling side. Uh, the Qt Creator 4.5, uh, if you download the Qt uh, 5.10, that comes with it. So it's part of the package uh, and we release it as part of the, the made, this, this Qt update. So the Qt Creator 4.5 uh, has also quite a lot of performance and uh, usability improvements. Um, there is uh, something which should make every developer happy uh, in improvements in the code editing and in the Clang code mode uh, model. Um, there are inline annotations, which is an inline helper for uh, C++. So if you make a typo, or you make a mistake with uh, uh, you with the which component or or, or variable you want to target. Uh, it can help you in fixing those. Um, there is a static analyzer uh, integration. Um, there is a uh, smooth scrolling inside a file, and uh, we've also improved the code highlighting uh, on on how you can actually pick different parts of the code uh, easier. We've also made some improvements on the on the building, uh, on the CMake support. We've improved detection of the cross compilers, uh, and there is a much improved uh, iOS and Android development uh, support. And I'll have a few slides on that topic coming up uh, later. So um, then on the deployment side. Um, there is a new UI for managing the uh, Apple devices uh, simulator. And there is a uh, improvement on de uh, deploying to Windows 10 uh, IoT devices on the universal Windows platform. So, so there's a hiccup there. So we fixed those now in this release. And somebody asked, you know, about the support date limits. Uh, I actually have a slide on that, so it's coming up later on the presentation. So uh, on the tooling side, uh, on the Qt Quick Designer, um, we have done quite a lot of improvements in there. Also, there is a, the big thing is the side-by-side -side editing on the QML and on the Visual Editor. So when you open the QML file, you can edit the QML code directly. And you can see the edits uh, and the impact of those edits directly on the Visual Editor. And then you can drag and drop stuff on the editor and change the variables and parameters on the editor. And you can see those changes also on the on the QML file. Uh, we've uh, improved the way to create and manage the custom QML components. So when you want to do your own uh, custom components, um, there's a better way to do it. Uh, the C++ backend, these uh, objects are now visible in the Qt Quick Designer, so that it makes it easier when you do an application where you put, as we expect you would put to do the most of the, 
the application logic and the power consuming uh, number crunching into the C++ and then you use the QML for the UI itself. And there's a lot of other smaller improvements also in this area. So there's also a change log for the Qt Quick Designer. And Designer is a tool that you can actually launch uh, the, without using the creator, uh, but it comes with the creator and typical use cases for the developer to use it uh, with the with the creator. And I think I earlier earlier already covered the image based style, which is also integrated into the Qt Quick Designer. That is really about the designer developer workflow improvements. Then on the mobile side of stuff, um, on the tooling for mobile phones, uh, for Androids, uh, iOS, and Windows 10, the universal uh, Windows platform devices, um, you can now fully develop on, on Creator. Uh, you can deploy and debug from Creator. Um, you need to install the native development tools and you need those for the, the projects and I'll cover that up in a moment. Um, there is a minimal configuration, so so you could do much of these things earlier also with the creator, but uh, you had to manually go uh, find the path and uh, locations of different items and then paste them in the in the right place. So there is actually a detection of the creator that it should be able to detect that okay you have the Android SDK, so the tool should put all the bits and pieces into the right place for you automatically. Uh, and this makes it very straightforward to deploy the programs um, uh, from the creator. Then on the uh, on the project side, uh, what we also do is now the creator is creating a native um, uh, project uh, files for you. Uh, you need those files uh, when you polish and do the final packaging of the application before submitting it to, for example, on the Play Store or in the Apple Application Store. So that you do with the native tools, but uh, you can pretty much do everything else on the Qt Creator. Uh, and all the native features are available in, in QML, uh, so there are no limitations that we know of uh, for the developers doing the QML API applications. And that's my last slide on the on the tooling side. So I'll be moving into the into the section for for the additional contents. So there's a totally new tool, uh, Q3D Studio. Well, it's not a totally new tool, but it's a new tool for the for the Qt. Um, so um, it takes the 3D UI creation uh, on the Qt tool uh, family, totally a new level. Uh, it allows rapid UI creation and deployment. Uh, there is a, what you see is what you get editor for the 3D UIs. Um, it also allows you to mix and match 2D elements and 3D elements in your UI. And it's a totally open uh, and extendable architecture. There is a full session for uh, an hour uh, with Sami in the, I think it's next week, uh, 16th of January and 18th of January in a similar time slots what we had these sessions uh, this week for the Midcute 5.10. So I'd advise if you are interested in 3D and the cool stuff which is happening on the 3D area, uh, please join that webinar. Then on the emulator, uh, which is part of the Qt4 device creation commercial packaging, uh, we have an emulator 3.0. Uh, like I said earlier, in the framework, we support uh, multiple different screens, so we also now support that on the on the emulator. Um, there is also uh, on the framework we have the gesture uh, gestures done right, so that there's been up updates on the gestures. So the same same things are now working also on the emulator, uh, having multi touches, uh, multi point touches, uh, and uh, simultaneous touches on different screens and so on. Uh, and there is a, we've been cleaning up and simplifying the plugin interface for the emulator on how do you create your own extensions or if you need to do, for example, simulations on maybe changing a, a GPS location or, or maybe adding sensors into your application through the emulator. So there is a cleaned up um, plugin interface on that area. 
Then on the Qt for automation packaging, which is also a commercial offering, uh, we have two new machine-to-machine -machine protocols. So there's a Qt, uh, MQTT a protocol available for developers. Um, this is a, a final version of this, so uh, we think it's good enough uh, for full production. Uh, we do support protocol levels uh, 3.1 and 4. Um, we have all quality of service levels, wildcards, authentication, SSL connections, last will support. So those are all the features that one would expect to have in the MQTT protocol. Um, also for the Qt4 automation, we have a technology preview of the Qt uh, QNX protocol, which is also a machine-to-machine -machine protocol typically used in the home automation uh, environments. And this is sort of stage that if you are interested in this area, I'd advise you to go and play with it and give us feedback um, how we can make it better for your need. And that was the, the end of the additional content. So the final section is coming up and then we'll go into those uh, questions, uh, all of them. So. Um, Talking about the regular releases and the long-term support releases. So um, a regular, all the releases start their life as a regular release. So we are gearboxing our uh, our releases. So the 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, we are releasing uh, a good release in, in roughly twice a year. So it comes in every six months. Um, one of those releases is then nominated into long-term support release. Uh, the nomination process is part, partially business, uh, but it's also partially quality, quality discussion. And we aim to have that we always have at least one long-term support release available for our customers. Um, the difference on these releases is that the, both of them start their life as a, as a feature evolution uh, releases with uh, bug fixes and, and, and feature evolution. But then on the long-term support release, um, uh, the focus after the first release, the focus turns into stability, security, and performance. Uh, and, and really in terms of budgeting and, and, and resourcing, we plan the updates for three years, whereas on the regular release, the updates are planned for maximum one year from the release. For both releases, uh, commercial customers can uh, purchase extended support. Uh, there are really limitations how old releases we will grant that, but uh, there is an extended support package available. Um, we do patch releases uh, upon demand. So uh, patch releases are not gearboxes. Uh, we do them when needed. Um, typically, the first release comes fairly quickly and the second release is not so quick and so on. Um, patch releases, uh, especially on the regular releases, uh, we want to be very strict that they only contain security and error corrections, whereas on the long-term support releases, because the commitment is for three years, we do sometimes add some minor feature improvements, um, or if there are um, operating system updates uh, and a discontinuation of the older operating system, those we need to put into the, especially into the longer term support releases. And uh, both the tech de deprecated modules and technology preview models are not part of the support commitment. So that's why it's also, uh, we when we are not yet ready with the fire, with the components, we label it as a technology preview and it's excluded from these, these comments, it's a beta. Then talking into the, the releases that are currently out there, so today uh, we have the Qt 5.6 long-term uh, support release, which was released in the 16th of March, 2016. So it's well past uh, its midway. Uh, it has a year and some remaining, year and a couple of months remaining for this uh, official support period. Um, the Qt 5.7 that was released in June, 2016 is expired. Uh, Q5.8, we released 23rd of January uh, last year. So it's week and some from the date of its expiration. And then Q5.9 was released 31st of May 2017. So that's in this infancy of a long term release. And then this uh, Q5.10 was out in 7th of December. So that's how it works on these releases. And then my last slide before we go into the question is about the, the, the performance improvement. So we made a 
quite a lot of performance updates uh, on the 5.9 compared to the 5.6, especially uh, on the embedded development. There is a big difference uh, because there's a cute light configuration and uh, quite a lot of fixes on different parts. But obviously, if you are not interested in the embedded, you are looking into the desktop development. There is a fair amount of quality fixes for you also on this release. So that's my last slide. Uh, let's go into the questions and I'll try to jump back to the slide where what's relevant for the question. So Patrick, do you want to take over and steer this part? Sure. Well, yeah, there's a comment on the Star Wars order. <laughs> That's missing the <clears throat> episode one. Maybe it's okay. for a reason. <laughs> yeah, okay. So but let's uh, go into the actual questions. Let's have a look. Uh, just a quick reminder that you can actually put your questions in the question box and uh, ask us whatever you think. If uh, you know, if we run out of questions, we can always talk about Star Wars. But uh, <laughs> yes, uh, people who um, didn't uh, join a little pre-ramble probably be confused. So let's start off with a couple of questions we're all yeah. familiar so with. So there's a question: Is there a way to embed QML into the QWidgets? The new version. So yes. Uh, but that comes with a caveat that maybe it's not advised. So it really depends on what you're doing. And uh, maybe it's best to have a discussion with our specialist to get a, a proper answer into that, that is it really the right thing to do in your case? Um, maybe to expand on that a little bit. Uh, personally, I'm also working on, uh, it's more of a translation and expansion of a white paper written by uh, Sequality, which is an Austrian uh, software engineering firm. They um, Essentially, your answer is, of course, it depends on the situation, and there are situations where it's advisable to combine the two technologies and uh, some where it just doesn't work. Um, that white paper will probably out somewhere in the next uh, month or two, so uh, try to look out for that. Uh, we'll uh, tell you more about it over social media and the usual cha uh, channels on the status. Um, so the next question is uh, regarding Bluetooth technology and is the Bluetooth scanner example on Windows, oh, just let me scroll. No, it, it says that for Bluetooth can we scan as was previously possibly on Linux? Uh, I assume so. Um, I think, you know, if it's asked, working, um, then... can we use the Bluetooth scanner example on Windows now? Um, uh, I just yeah, asked as far as, I, as far as I know, it should work. If it's not working, file a back and we'll fix it. Right. Uh, next one. Will the Spectre meltdown vulnerability in Chromium be fixed for Qt Web Engine? And uh, in which Qt versions uh, is the patch going to be? The patch is going to be merged. Uh, yeah, the I, I know that the Spectre Meltdown may be impacting on the Chromium. I think, you know, it will be fixed at some point. I just don't know what is the right date of when the fixes are in there. And I actually, I'm not intimate enough with that technology to understand what really is actually being fixed. So uh, maybe, you know, discussing with the engineering forums or directly through Bucks is the right way to. Uh, there was also a question about the support date limit for Qt 5.10 and if it's LTS, I think you pretty much answered that I think one. I covered that already. I hope it's clear. So the support and date for 5.10 is a uh, year from release. So that would be early December this year. And That's then, a good of course, question. if you are building your business on it, so um, you can always buy the extended support package. Well, here's a good question, uh, slightly related. Uh, for those, uh, uh, for our new Qt project, should we use Qt 5.9 or 5.10? Qt 5.10 has new features, but its support will end sooner than for Qt 5.9. Yeah, the, yeah. The, this uh, it depends what you're doing. So if you don't need the new features, you know, go for 5.9. It's quite obvious. If you do need the new uh, new features, then you may go with the 5.10 and then upgrade or you apply an extended support package. So it really depends on your use case. I uh, can't give you a, a definite, there is no one right answer. All the answers are right. 
plus the new features, they will also be supported in the future, most likely? Yeah, on the next releases, of course. Intention is not to build a new new feature and then you know take it away on the next release. That wouldn't make any sense. So, of course. So, for further in-depth question, if you want to maybe discuss it with uh, one of your experts and uh, give you some time to elaborate on your situation in general, um, a good place to send that question to is info at cute.io. Or on your website, you always uh, can find a way to contact us and uh, talk to us about uh, your projects and your challenges. Um, does the Qt virtual keyboard style switching depend on graphic population style of writing, or what does that mean? Um, Carlos, uh, can you elaborate the question? I'm also, you know. Uh, does the Qt virtual keyboard style switch depend on specific population style of writing, or what does that mean? Okay, I guess if you could uh, rephrase the, <laughs> the question. Um, oh, style switching, what, what does it mean? You, well, um, there is a well, you can switch the different kind of keyboards that you want to use uh, or or you can offer for the consumer so the consumer can switch the different styles so if i'm being unclear uh try it can you compare 5.9 lts features between gpl v3 license and commercial license well, the, the features uh, on the open source version of the Qt and on the application development packaging that we have, those are uh, feature-wise the same. The difference is on the license. So what are the terms and conditions for you, how you use the product? Then on the, on the we also have these other commercial packages like the Qt for device creation and Qt for automation and other bits where we have modules that are not offered as part of the open source offering. So they are commercial only. Um, does either 5.9 or 5.10 support the high dynamic range and white color gamut APIs on Windows and Mac OS? Or do we need to make direct OS calls for these? I can't say. I. Um... I think we need to talk to a guy who's actually working on that area. Right. Um, maybe check this out in the blog. There's so, a so quite a couple... something that you you could get in touch or or Adams, D Adams, if you could you know send that for us at info at cute.io, and we can look into that. We'll find the engineer who gives you a specific definite answer. Right, so um, uh, let me know if there are any more questions. It's been uh, running quite well so far. In the meantime, um, do you, Santu, know of any Q technology uh, used in the production of Star Wars? Uh, well, we wouldn't be able to disclose that kind of uh, data if it's a customer-specific data. So those are always confidential to the customer. Uh, having said that, also, we have a lot of customers who are using the open source queues, uh, we don't know all of them. So possibly, quite likely, I can't say. You might, uh, well, I'm not saying anything here, but you might, uh, you know, some of the new laser lightsabers, you might wonder why they have a distinct shade of green that's a bit reminiscent of uh, our company color. This is just as a small observation. <laughs> You noticed episode I think we are one. Running out of, yeah, I think yeah, I think we are running out of steam for the for the proper question. So, thank <laughs> right. you so very much, guys, for joining and listening to us blabber about the release. So, and Star Wars and uh, other things. No, well, thank you all so much um, for joining. This is about all the time we have. Then, uh, if you have. Uh, any more questions, just as a repeat, uh, send them to info 
at cute, qt.io, and we will answer them for you. So, uh, and also if you enjoyed yourself, um, uh, we have a couple of more webinars lined up. For example, next week, we will have Sami Makonen over who will talk to you about Q3D Studio. Uh, for those who don't know, Q3D Studio is our cool new tool, which uh, makes it super easy to create 3D user interfaces, both for developers and UI designers. And uh, well, the cool thing about it is also that you, also can, uh, it's quite fast, so uh, uh, this is the webinar you might want to listen to if you often want to create quick UI mockups to show your customers or look for something that lets you iterate quicker, uh, more often, more efficiently. Um, that will be next Tuesday and Thursday for the different time zones, as uh, Santo already mentioned. If you have some input or feedback, um, you know, what you'd like to change, what you'd like to hear about, uh, suggestions for further webinars. Um, submit that in the survey that follows after. And um, yes, um, Santu, any parting words? No, I think we're good. Thank you very much. Those were good questions. Sorry I couldn't address them all, but you know, we'll find an answer for you. We will. Until then, um, we wish you all a great uh, day evening, night, wherever you are. And until next time, take care. Cheerios.